Hi team! With your research articles right around the corner, I wanted to make sure that you guys had some really good resources and references to use when you're building your charts and graphs and doing your stats. So this video is going to be a simple video about how to make scatter plot graphs in Excel where I show you how to do some of the basic fun functions in Excel. If you'd like to follow along, I've uploaded a link to the exact Excel file that I'm using so you can download it and follow along with me. So the first thing that I would like to do is to talk a little bit about the experimental setup and it's really important for you guys to know what the, your experimental setup is because when you have it in your head it'll be a little bit easier to organize your Excel sheet and then it'll be a little bit easier to know if the graph you get at the end is actually conveying the story that you think it should be conveying. So our experimental setup in this case is based on the experiment that we did a little bit earlier with the Great Terrible Dragon. And the Great Terrible Dragon is a crop pest because it breeds fire and crops are flammable. And so farmers are upset and ask scientists to figure out a way to fix the problem. And so the scientists didn't want to kill the dragons and instead created three different solutions to suppress fire breath. They used ammonium, potassium, and sodium, and after their experiment found that sodium was the best at suppressing fire breath. So now the, the scientists are trying to optimize a, a concentration for their solution. They want a concentration that is still effective at suppressing fire breath, but isn't overkill and is still cheap enough for the farmer so it's economically viable. So here in my data set, here are my labels. And I have my five trials set up, and I've already inserted the fire breaths that each dragon breathed after consuming the treated cattle. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to take the average for each concentration. And this is because I want my one point to be a snapshot of all the trials for that one solution. I don't want one concentration of the solution to have several different points associated with it, I just want one. And to do that, I need to calculate the average. To calculate the average, I've already set up a row designated for the average, and I hit the equal sign on the keyboard, which tells Excel that it's time to run a function. And so in the ribbon, which is this big pink gray thing, there's a little button next to this text box that says F of X, and that's your insert function button. So I'm going to click that, and I've run average really recently, but if you haven't, you can just search for it. And all the things that are related to averages shows up in this little box, and we want the real average, so average, average, and you hit OK. Instead of typing in each number individually, because that would be a pain, Excel is smart enough to know and to understand what you're doing if you plug in an entire range. So you can just go over to your your Excel spreadsheet and click and drag and insert your entire range and you'll see that over here each of the numbers in that range has showed up and you can hit OK. So repeating this process for the next few data series wouldn't be like a huge problem but it'd be kind of annoying. So there is a little shortcut that we can do so you want to make sure that the function that you just inserted is highlighted and you can do that just by clicking on it and you'll notice that there's a big thick rectangular box around it and there's this little square on the side and you'll notice that when I hover over the square my cursor changes from a big white plus sign to a smaller black filled in plus sign and you can hold the corner and drag your data across and this shortcut tells Excel to take the function that we just ran and apply it to the next column. And you can see that when I click on the first one that we did, it says average D11 through D15, which is the column and range that we put in. And if I click the next one, you'll see that it says average E11 to E15. And so you can clearly tell that Excel filled everything in for you. Now that we've done that, we can insert the chart and we can do this by first highlighting your labels and then on your keyboard hitting the control apple or command key depending if you have a pc or a mac and highlight your averages 
and the control apple or command key just tells the computer that you want to highlight two things that are not immediately next to each other so now that you've highlighted your labels and your and your averages you can insert the chart and you go up to the ribbon and next to home is insert and you don't want a line graph because a line graph will connect all of your points together instead we want a scatter plot and we want a scatter plot with markers only and we can insert the scatter plot if you're interested we can color code the points and you can do that by clicking on one of the points and then right clicking going to format data series marker fill solid fill and you can pick whatever color you want. I'm gonna pick green because that's what color our dragon is. And then you hit close. From now, we get to label our chart. And the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the series legend. And you can do that by clicking on the box and hitting delete. This is important because the series legend will tell you about the chart if multiple things are going on at the same time. So for example, if we were to run this experiment exactly the same, except we use three different dragons, the series legend would be color coded to map those three dragons. And since we only have one series or one dragon, we don't need the series legend in this chart. And now we need to continue labeling our chart. So you'll notice if I click off of the graph, we don't have a bunch of options up here that we would if I click onto the chart. So if you click onto the chart, this chart tools button comes up in green. If you click away from the chart, that goes away. So if you're trying to find some of these options, just make sure that you're actually clicked on the chart. So to add the labels, we are going to go to layout and chart tools and axes titles. And we want the primary horizontal axis title and we want the title below the axis. And this is going to be our solution concentration. You'll notice that our solution concentration goes up by two starting with one and our chart goes up by two starting with zero. And so we can actually add in those extra points on the X axis by going to axes and primary horizontal axis and more horizontal axis options and you could set the minimum and maximum if you want to I'm going to set the major unit from auto to fixed and change from 2 to 1 so all of the points show up and there you have it I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to see and now we can add the Y axis by going to the primary vertical axis options and I like the rotated title and this will be number of fire breaths and then you can add your chart title and I prefer the above the chart title and we could just call this fire breath suppression after consuming treated cattle and you want your chart late your chart title to actually be descriptive of what the chart is so that way the reader can easily find the chart that is related to the information that they're curious about now that we have created the chart we need to add our error bars and to do this we need to calculate standard deviation and you're probably like well hey Nancy there's this cool button right up there that says error bars well the problem with this is that we don't want percentage error bars and while people use standard error and standard deviation to calculate error bars this option applies a the same standard error or the same standard deviation to each of your points and that is not the case for us so we need to calculate our own standard deviation to add our add in our own error bars. To calculate our standard deviation, we're going to apply a function just like we did for average, and we will hit the equal sign to tell Excel that we want to run a function and go up to the function box. I have used standard deviation recently, but if you haven't, you can just look it up. Hit go, and we want STDEV for standard deviation. 
and we'll hit OK. And just like with average, we can highlight an entire range instead of inputting each individual number, and we'll hit OK. We use standard deviation for the error bars because standard deviation basically asks the question, how much do our trials vary from the mean? Or what variation is in our sample set? And to copy the function over the seven other data points we have left, we'll just do the same short shortcut as we did for the averages. Now that we've done that, we need to actually put the error bars on the chart. So you can click on your data series, and you can go to Layout, in the Chart Tools, Error Bars, More Error Bar Options. We want both the positive and negative, and we want the cap. And we need to move this box out of the way of our data, because when we go to Custom, and we want to specify the value, this little box thinks it's more important than anyone else, and so you can't move the big box out of the way anymore. To add the standard deviation, you first clear out the data that's already been inputted into the box, and you will control Apple or Command and click each of the values for the standard deviation. In some newer versions of Excel, you don't have to control click, you could just highlight and it knows to map each of the values to each of the dots. But some older versions of Excel aren't quite that smart and so if you just control click, you're always, always, always telling the computer to map each value to each separate dot. And for the negative error bar value, because our negative and positive is the same, we're going to just repeat the process and you can hit OK. So we have a big major problem with the error bars and that is that in addition to our vertical error bars we have horizontal error bars. And the vertical error bar makes sense because this shows the number of fire breaths that that was breathed in each of our trials for each solution. So it makes sense that there's a variation because different dragons breathe different amounts of fire breaths. However, a horizontal error bar doesn't make sense because this would be suggesting that our concentration of our solution varied each time. And our scientists were really good and really precise, and so we know that their measurements were accurate. So there's no need for an error bar. This is also true if you do time or you're really good about measuring temperature. You shouldn't have a horizontal error bar. And it's really easy to get rid of them. You can just click on the horizontal error bar and hit delete on your keyboard and they go away. The second problem that we have is that because of our error bars, our y-axis now goes below zero. And it doesn't make sense to have a y-axis that goes below zero because our dragons couldn't breathe fewer than zero fire breaths. So to get rid of the extension of the y-axis, we can go up to the chart tools and to layout and then to axes and click on it and we want the primary vertical axis and we want more primary vertical axes options and we can go to the minimum we want a fixed minimum of zero and we hit close and then our graph is fixed. So now we can see that the concentration of sodium that is most effective is somewhere between 11 and 15. And in the next video where I talk about stats, I'll show you how to add a trend line and your R-squared value to this chart.